Let's try this again. Great. Okay, I hope everyone can hear me and uh, is supposed to um, uh, start broadcast, but I want to make sure, can anyone give me a hint that I'm actually live and also uh, I'm going to share my, make sure I share my screen. Can everyone see my uh, screen as well? All right, and uh, great, thank you, Christina. And also, I share my screen, so hopefully you can also see my screen. Uh, my apologies, this is the first time I use this tool, so I uh, also wanted to uh, um, make sure. Great, all right, let's get started. Uh, good morning. Well, I don't think anyone is good morning unless you're joining us from Hawaii. Good afternoon good, uh, and maybe good evening. Um, thank you for attending the Working with Oracle Digital Assistant as part of the PeopleSoft Reconnect conference hosted by Quest. My name is Joe Huang. I'm the product manager with the Oracle Digital Assistant. And um, today I'm going to talk about Digital Assistant and uh, not only the, um, not just the, uh, um, current, uh, sorry, not just the um, current feature, but also some roadmap and uh, and roadmap information can change. So this is just a disclaimer that uh, these can change. Uh, we have four items on our, um, uh, let me actually, sorry, do a little bit of a screen arrangement. Um, and, um, okay. Um, we have four um, uh, topics today. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the digital system. Uh, assume most of you have um, um, seen this before. Um, and, um, <clears throat> and also I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the concept of multiple skills and also chatbot. We're also going to just talk a little bit about PeopleSoft integration and also how um, um, the, the related skills or chatbot has been delivered. And then we're going to talk about recent updates and roadmap. Okay, um, exactly what is an Oracle Digital Assistant? Um, in short, it's a platform to build intelligent chatbot. It's AI based and based on natural language processing. On the screen on the right here, you see an example of the Oracle Digital Assistant. It's um, actually a digital assistant about a digital assistant. It can answer questions on a digital system. It's something that we uh, release and provide to our end user. So you can use the uh, digital system to find information about, for example, how to configure certain functionality and, and so forth. All right. Uh, um, <clears throat> and um, the um, and as you can see from the screen, digital assistant interacts with uh, allows the end user to interact with backend system through a natural language. The I think most of you have heard about the the term chatbot, and chatbot is really the first generation of the conversational user interface. It's single purpose. Uh, you know, you have to um, engage the uh, uh, chatbot and can an handle simple sentences. However, in order for that voice technology to really take off, the um, important what we have to do is we have to evolve the uh, chatbot into digital system. And the difference with digital system is that it's multi-purpose, it's proactive and predictive, and also can handle more natural complex sentences. All right. So what do we mean by that? So first of all, let's look at a um, anatomy of a single chatbot or now we call it a skill. The, um, um, and, and basically all chatbot platform has these four components. What are those? The first part is ch channel configurator and that basically allows the chatbot to connect to multiple um, messaging applications, be it Microsoft Team, be it um, uh, Facebook and Slack and or even SMS. The second part is a dialog flow execution engine that basically executes a conversation between a user and the um, uh, digital system platform. So we kind of drive essentially the conversational experiences. This is where the developer would define what that flow would look like, but also the, um, uh, this is also where um, the, during runtime, 
it's essentially act like a state engine that carries the, the uh, conversation through. Third part is an enterprise data integration that connects the chatbot platform with the backend application to the data. And um, with PeopleSoft, we, um, the PeopleSoft team actually did a great job in creating that um, out of the box enterprise data integration or PeopleSoft integration through the PeopleSoft integration framework to the backend. Now, because Digital Assistant is also a platform, you can use it and you can connect to any backend application using this layer. With Oracle's offering, of course, we offer out of the box um, integration with the uh, um, Oracle application. But with third party, you can also just build your integration to it using uh, JavaScript and Node.js. The fourth part is a conversational AI engine that basically allows you to train the visual assistant on understanding what the user uh, wants to do based on the different terminology. So that, for example, if the user I say, I want to um, find my vacation balance, it knows that, okay, this is, um, um, you want to ask about vacation balance, then you correspondingly invoke the, the, course, um, the corresponding API to PeopleSoft to bring that data back. Now, what's different about Digital Assistant and why it's multiple skills and multi-purpose is this. The, uh, each of the application backend would, uh, you, you basically create the skills or individual chatbot a focused set of um, uh, functionalities that maps to the uh, uh, backend um, application, right? So for HCM, you may have employee goals or absence management. For ERP, you may have a skill or chatbot for procurement. So the um, either Oracle provides it, or you will be able to develop these skills yourself. These are basically individual chatbot. And then what makes a digital system is that the customer then can pick these individual skills and compose their digital system. Right, so that's what makes a digital system multi-skilled. What does Oracle offer and provide out of the box? Um, really quite, quite a lot. Now, for this session, obviously, the main interest would be around PeopleSoft. And PeopleSoft delivered absence management, employee uh, directory, uh, requisition, expenses, as well as an integration framework that allows you to basically virtually expose any people saw functionality to um, the digital system. However, um, <clears throat> many of you may have other um, Oracle application offerings. You can see a variety of um, different chatbot or pre-built skills that's offered through HCM, through ERP, uh, logistics, public sector, and even um, sales and service and also our um, um, vertical applications such as uh, financial services. And uh, if we look at the uh, digital assistant um, architecture a little bit closer, right, what you'll see basically, again, on the left side is the variety of channels or messaging client that you can interact with Oracle Digital Assistant. It goes through this channel configurator layer and goes into this intelligent routing layer. Um, intelligent routing layer is a unique feature for Oracle Digital Assistant, also a very critical feature, because it understands which skill to route a request to, meaning that um, if I'm asking about an HR-related question, this intelligent routing layer will route to the uh, PeopleSoft skill. If I'm asking about ERP, okay, it may be PeopleSoft ERP um, as well. But what if I ask something about um, CRM? Then it will route the request to a, a CRM chatbot or skill. So intelligent routing is key to enabling digital system to be enterprise grade. Um, now, why is it critical? And, and uh, what is it? It basically it works like an air traffic uh, controller. It basically controls the flow of a conversation between and also within the, uh, the skills. And it is um, key to orchestrating the uh, skills um, and routing between different chatbots. And uh, it is intelligent routing. So basically, the requests are basically routed to the best, uh, what we call it best fit, but basically digital system will make the first uh, deciphering of what user is asking and then um, forward the request to the right chatbot or skill. Um, and Digital Assistant has built in what we call disambiguation so that if 
there's vagueness in terms of which skill should receive the request, digital system automatically prompt user for it. Um, user can explicitly or implicitly route between different skills. And um, implicitly, basically, if the user asks a different question, digital system detects it and routes to a different skill. Uh, you can also say explicit, it's completely configurable by you. Um, the way that it works is like this. The, a request comes in to digital system and say, I want to order a new laptop, right? It's a skill, it's a request for procurement. So it routes to the procurement um, digital uh, skill. And if user says, well, what day do I start my job? Um, which is a completely different uh, um, question and, all, and, and um, handled by a different um, chat or skill, then it's going to route the request to job offers um, skill. Right. And what are some of the benefits for the digital system routing? Uh, there's a lot of reason. It modularizes the functionality, so you don't have to create a one giant uh, digital system that can um, uh, meet all the requests, which is um, actually, uh, sorry, one giant chatbot that has to handle a huge number of intent. Um, the challenge with that, and uh, as you know, some of you may have worked with chatbot before, is that you know, once you add more and more intent, where basically what user can ask in a single chatbot, the examples or training data for these um, um, intent gets become very similar and becomes increasingly difficult to uh, disambiguate. All the chatbot, current chatbot platform has a limitation, and that's why it can only handle a limited set of tasks. The digital system, however, can um, is consist of mo those multiple skills so that it knows which uh, skills to route to and not be encumbered by um, this uh, limitation and makes it modular and also can um, improve non sequitur handling. What do you mean by that? It's basically, um, an example is exactly like this. You can just in the middle of flow ask a different question, that's a non sequitur, and uh, we're able to handle that through the digital system. All right, <clears throat> so let's take a quick look at uh, an example of an enterprise uh, digital system. If I have um, hopefully not time yet. All right. So this is actually so disclaimer is not actually a PeopleSoft uh, digital assistant. Um, and actually, in other sessions, um, David Bain sessions and a few other sessions later in the uh, uh, reconnect conference, you're going to see uh, PeopleSoft skills and uh, chat on in action. What I wanted to do is just demonstrate how a uh, um, digital system works um, by routing between different uh, um, So for example, um, I can start a request by saying, uh, what is my vacation balance? And it goes to the back end and uh, gets the data. Now, again, in this demo, I'm actually connecting to the uh, um, to the um, uh, Oracle HCM cloud. But the back end can just perfectly be uh, PeopleSoft um, as well. And uh, I can then also say, uh, um, who is Brian? All right, so from uh, vacation absence management, I'm now uh, going to um, a directory, All right? So again, I'm now beginning to, to ask different questions and uh, uh, hit different skills or chat on. And what if I do something completely different, order a new laptop? So this is what procurement, and uh, it will just say, and, and now it routes the, um, the digital system now routes the um, a user to a completely new chatbot or skill seamlessly that allows me to uh, complete a procurement. So this is obviously not an HR uh, related functionality, this is an ERP functionality. So it routes seamlessly to um, an ERP uh, chatbot. So I'm just gonna complete the flow and it will create the uh, requisition for you.
And uh, while I was doing that, so I would just mention that um, last but not the least, uh, I can also ask a question. So it's really easy uh, in Digital Assistant to create a, um, a FAQ integrated with into your, uh, whether it's a PeopleSoft uh, Digital Assistant or other um, uh, Digital Assistant. Um, okay, so the, yep, okay. And uh, I can say I have a question. So in this case, I've integrated FAQ into the uh, uh, skill into the digital system. Uh, I can just say, well, am I an essential worker? Uh, I have some question on whether I should be returning to work or not. So I can go ahead and ask that question. And it returns the uh, uh, response back. I can even create a service request if I really wanted to do that. If the uh, no solution can be found. All right, so just a quick demo of how the uh, digital assistant um, skills routing work. Right, and then of what the um, <clears throat> digital assistant um, uh, looks like. Well, so actually let's look at the, uh, basically how you um, um, design um, a, um, will create a skill. Member um, skill correspond to a chatbot, right? And um, so let me make sure. Sometimes I'm waiting for uh, the, the session to start. Uh, it, it may have time out. So let's take a look at a, a, you know this approvals um, just as an example or chatbot or skill. Um, as you may recall, there are four key components to a um, chatbot. The first part is um, a channel configurator, and uh, that's actually configured through the um, uh, channels, and we support a variety of um, different um, channels or messaging applications, as you can see here, as well as web application and uh, mobile application. Um, web is actually the default mechanism that a PeopleSoft uh, digital system can be accessed. The web is um, and basically exposed through the uh, PeopleSoft um, user interface. All right. Um, now, as for the other parts, if we look at the uh, um, anatomy of a, a skill, what you need to define, the first thing you would need to define for a skill are different intent. Intent basically is a list of things that user may be asking, user may want to do. In this case, for approval type of a skill, um, user may want to just go ahead and improve something. Now, the way that you help train the uh, um, digital assistant to understand what user is asking is by providing a set of um, examples of how user may be asking the question. So for each of the intent, you will provide a set of uh, examples of how user may be asking the question. All right. The uh, second step in defining a um, uh, skill or chatbot is defining entities. Entities are basically keywords that you want to extract out of um, uh, the digital system. So for example, um, uh, for a um, uh, approval, maybe you want to extract out the uh, absence type, uh, right, to in, for, for um, absence approval type of um, thing. So it's a, you know, I like to approve my uh, um, uh, vacation versus uh, I want to approve um, a um, uh, sick leave request, for example, right? So that, that sick leave versus vacation, that's a, a key where you want to extract out. That's what we call entity. So you also define a set of entities to extract from here. The third thing is the dialogue flow. Again, that's one of the four components of the um, uh, digital system. The dialogue flow basically defines a series of states what user is going to go through in the conversation. And um, the primary way to develop this, is there's a visual editor that you can create your flow visually. Uh, and uh, however, what we found is most of the developers actually prefer to use the XML uh, version. It's um, a lot more uh, flexible. In the XML version, what you'll see is each of these blocks are essentially a state that the um, conversation may go through. And within each of those states, um, <clears throat> basically there's a set of variables that um, digital system can track, as well as making calls to the back end to get data back. 
Um, there's a host of other things that I won't go too deeply into, but um, another thing that's interesting is uh, what we call resource bundle. Resource bundle basically are the text streams that actually get displayed back to the end user when the uh, digital system responds. Now, we expose those as digital, um, as resource bundle is so that it's very easy for you to go ahead and customize the response from um, um, or uh, update and define the um, uh, response. And then um, I'm going to talk about the um, um, analytics or insight a little bit uh, later. And this one actually have it disabled. And last but not the least is um, um, what we call custom component. Custom component basically are a, a set of uh, uh, parameters and method that communicates with the backend application. So for uh, PeopleSoft, there's an example of the uh, custom component that knows how to communicate with the uh, PeopleSoft backend, right? as well as an example of the uh, implementation. The implementation is basically a Node.js JavaScript uh, application that um, you write or you modify, in this case, from PeopleSoft that knows how to connect to the PeopleSoft uh, API. In this case, it talks to the uh, PeopleSoft integration broker and get the data back and um, um, make the request into the data back. All right. Now, what digital system then is, and, and the user interface is, um, is like this. Digital system is consisted of multiple skills. So you, you may recall approval is one of the skills. There may be other HCM skills and so forth. So the process of creating a digital system is simply adding these skills to a digital system and then adding a few things like um, or the example utterances for the uh, for the skill, and um, let's see. You can also add you know small talk and reading to the uh, digital assistant. There's an in you know insight at digital assistant level, and uh, there are also some configuration parameters that you can configure to say, for example, where are the confidence threshold? How sure do you want the digital assistant to be when routing to a skill? So all of these are documented, and um, we have a lot of documentation around that. But what we want to show you is the uh, that layer on top of these individual chatbot is completely customizable um, that you will be able to leverage to create a single interface into these different uh, skills. All right, moving on. What about PeopleSoft? What, and specifically, PeopleSoft integration? What is um, um, you know, what is PeopleSoft team doing to expose uh, digital system functionality to um, to PeopleSoft customers? Uh, again, because there are more sessions that's going to talk about the PeopleSoft skills and actually demo it. Uh, I, I won't go into the demo aspect. Instead, I'll just talk about um, basically what it is. Um, well. This is a pretty, um, it's basically, it's a um, um, digital assistant that exposes uh, key people saw functionality for HR manager, for ERP, and you can interact with either voice or text. And uh, there is a, a pre-built people saw bot, temp, uh, there are actually quite a few people saw uh, digital assistant uh, skills templates. Uh, for each functional area, as well as a generic uh, template. The way that um, uh, sort of the functional uh, architecture diagram uh, basically looks like this. Um, there are two levels or uh, two places of integration. The first level integration is in the back end. Basically, the uh, um, digital assistant would have a Node.js module that the um, uh, PeopleSoft team will provide an example or, uh, or start a template as. And, um, and that combines a PeopleSoft, a set of um, uh, API calls, as well as ODA SDK that knows how to call the integration broker to get data back from PeopleSoft uh, application itself. Right, so that's the, um, um, the backend integration. Then the user interface integration is through the uh, this ODA channel through the web channel. Essentially, it would expose a um, uh, digital assistant into the uh, PeopleSoft application, those that through Microsoft Teams 
through Slack or any other messaging application. You don't have to put it into the uh, web application. However, the default is that it can expose the digital system, the um, uh, PeopleSoft uh, experience into the uh, uh, into the web UI. Um, PeopleSoft team did a really great job in um, creating an integration framework. The integration framework allows the digital system um, and uh, to easily plug into um, PeopleSoft to get key um, data, but also integrates with PeopleSoft security, allows you to um, uh, configure and things like that. So really, really helps you to get started very quickly. So even if um, you don't have um, PeopleSoft team didn't release the skill for a particular area, you'll be able to build very easily using this integration framework to build your own digital assistant, extending PeopleSoft. All right, so um, PeopleSoft skill store. What, what exactly, um, uh, where do you find these people, PeopleSoft skills? These PeopleSoft skills are deployed through the digital assistance skill store. And uh, the versioning is aligned with uh, PeopleSoft images. And more importantly, this is why I highlighted it. It's include, you can extend it using the uh, digital system extensibility tool to extend the skill. So if you need to modify it, you can use the extension skill, uh, extension tool to extend it. Okay, so I'm starting to use the term extend. I haven't used that term before. You know, I was, you know, I, I, you know we just talked about a skill chatbot. There's a set of functionality. What if you want to customize it? What if you want to add your terminology? Add um, a um, some additional um, um, flow in a conversation, things like that. How do you do that? That's through the extension um, um, <clears throat> framework. Um, now, the um, um, where are the uh, the customization options, right? So you can either do one of two things. You can either you know take the um, um, a skill and extend it. Um, or you can create a copy of it, right? So the difference is the um, um, basically when you extend a skill, that is a virtual copy of an existing shipping skill that PeopleSoft ships. And uh, customization can actually override a variety of settings, right? So you can do a lot in customizing your um, um, PeopleSoft skills. And but the most important thing is the skills can be rebased to a newer version. So when people saw, for example, come up with a new version of the PeopleSoft skill, you can actually merge your customizations into the uh, uh, into the new version of the digital system. It's because all the customization is being tracked by this extending extensibility tool. Now, you can also uh, uh, clone a skill. If you really want to start from scratch, you just want to use an, um, you know, PeopleSoft skill as an example, you can do that as well. Basically, you create a copy. By creating a copy, basically, if you break the dependency and link to the original base skill, essentially, you're on your own. And, uh, um, and um, you obviously cannot um, rebase to a, a newer version because at that point, there's no concept of tracking and customization. You can also extend the digital system, which for PeopleSoft is less um, applicable. Um, for Fusion App, there's actually a digital system uh, that manages all of the, the Fusion application skills that we ship, and that can be extended as well. However, for PeopleSoft, PeopleSoft really just focus on delivering skills, and you actually create the digital system that manage all the different skills. Or just. All right, now here's the process of how to extend the skill. Basically, in the um, once you found the skill, you can say extend it, create a copy of it, give it a new name, and then what you see is the from a UI, you'll get the clue that um, you're extending a skill. And you can do a lot with extending the skill. Uh, you can create, modify, disable intents and entities and utterances. Uh, as well as custom component, um, and uh, and also um, uh, resource bundles, and you can also modify the conversation flow. Obviously, you can't delete the conversation flow. Um, the um, um, you can actually in, in this case, 
uh, in order to get uh, for PeopleSoft customers to get Digital Assistant, you can either use Digital Assistant platform. Uh, you can either purchase Digital Assistant platform for SAS SKU, or we also have a universal credit SKU for Digital Assistant. But basically, means that is you will need the um, uh, the platform for these type of um, for hosting and running the PeopleSoft skills. And there's a lot of things that you can do to extend it. So some of the um, um, examples, for example, uh, of extending is that, let's say you don't use um, a certain intent shipped by the PeopleSoft skill just because you didn't implement the corresponding uh, functionality on the uh, PeopleSoft site. You can disable it. You can also modify the conversation flow to give it a different user experience. Um, and again, the, the most critical benefit for um, using the um, um, by to extend uh, when extending the skill is that the um, um, it makes these customization and extensions um, upgrade safe so all the changes are being tracked what you do is when there's a new version of the skill PeopleSoft team that people team ships you can merge the uh, all the changes into it. There's just some details of um, how to uh, publish a, uh, a skill and making it um, available in a digital system. And last but not the least, just a quick um, update um, and example. Um, one of our uh, key customers, which is um, Honeywell, um, Honeywell has um, extended their PeopleSoft uh, backend with an employee and manager self-service digital assistant built using uh, uh, Oracle Digital Assistant. It is actually uh, accessible from both web portal and also Microsoft Teams. And, and um, so digital assistant can work through Microsoft Teams in addition to just work through the PeopleSoft, um, uh, PeopleSoft UI. All right, so let's take a look. What are we talking about here with uh, all these PeopleSoft um, skills and, and uh, so forth? So let me see if I can get my back. All right, so first of all, where can you find these um, uh, PeopleSoft skills? Well, the first thing you will need is an Oracle Digital Assistant uh, platform, which is really not difficult to get. You can either um, uh, subscribe to Oracle Cloud uh, and uh, what we call universal credit account and then provision of digital assistant. Or if you work with our uh, applications um, sales teams, um, if you prefer a you know, subscription model versus a uh, usage-based model, uh, then you can also subscribe to Oracle Digital Assistant. We have a SKU called Oracle Digital Assistant Platform for SaaS, or sorry, um, for applications that you can use to provision um, to get digital assistant in a subscription model. Uh, if you prefer a consumption model, then the um, uh, Oracle Universal Credit model may be the uh, option for you to get the digital assistant platform. But in either case, you will need a digital assistant platform. Then when you get the digital, digital system platform in the uh, um, skill store, my mouse has disappeared again, you will see a, um, a bunch of uh, PeopleSoft uh, related skills as well as skills from other um, from other um, um, part of the uh, the Oracle um, ecosystem, well, not ecosystem, from other Oracle teams. For example, order shipment status is actually at Oracle Transportation Management Logistics uh, skills. For people saw, you can see there's an employee directory skill, there's an absence management, their expense inquiry, and uh, also a um, um, there's a, also a PeopleSoft skills template. So if, uh, and, and this is really a template where you can build customization to access virtually any PeopleSoft backend. What you notice is that the, uh, there's also a version and this version corresponds to the PeopleSoft version. And um, in order to use the uh, digital assistant, uh, sorry, the PeopleSoft skill in your environment, you just, just go click on this hamburger icon and say pull. I had already, uh, you know, previously pulled uh, this uh, skill in the interest of time. 
However, um, if I <clears throat> pick another one, increase. Uh, looking at okay, then you'll be able to pull it, and basically, that will load a copy of that skill into my local environment. All right, so I pulled a few um, uh, skills ready, and. Um, Look at those. Okay, forget about this one. So people saw have absence, uh, assistant, employee, a directory, and a skills template. So I have these already. So how do I work with that? So um, I can deploy it as is if I don't want to make any changes, or I can um, extend it. So let's extend it. All right. So uh, I would say people saw have absence, uh, assistant. Uh, Right, so what this does is basically creates a virtual copy of the uh, uh, PeopleSoft absence uh, assistant skill. And when you go in into it, and utterances for this particular uh, skill for managing absences, right? So for managing absences, what user, what functionality support it are the uh, absences, uh, Checking absence balance, cancel absence. Uh, there are some uh, greetings for entry and ex exit, um, asking for future balances, and also requesting balances. For each of these examples, uh, for these each of these um, intents, there are a set of uh, large set of examples already predefined. All right, so you don't have to. Um, um, so. You, you don't have to start from scratch and train the digital system to understand something. However, let's say, well, I really have a different way of calling absence. Um, so uh, I just say, say, I want to, um, I don't know, um, take a, I, I think I heard um, there's, a, I don't know how many of you are from Australia. I heard this term. Um, when the uh, uh, Australian wants to um, um, wants to uh, uh, is taking a sick leave, I think they call it a sicky. So I'll just use that. Um, right. Now, uh, what you notice is the icon change here to green indicates that I have customized the absence balance uh, intent, and that change is tracked by digital system. And uh, so that when there's a new version of the PeopleSoft absence management skills, you can rebase, you can pull the new version, and then merge that customization into the new version. So, you, so it makes the uh, these customizations upgrade safe, right? So, okay. So we're so for example, um, sorry. All right. So let's see if I can see the example um, I've just entered. Uh, there's a lot of uh, terminology. Uh, oh, there we go. So I found this is the one that I just entered. I want to take a sicky. As you can see, there's no uh, icon here. It means that this is a. Um, uh, change I made locally, only local to this um, version of Digital Assistant. I can also just um, click on this and, and filter it to see uh, what's, what's available, right? So it's just an example of what we're tracking. Same thing for entities. Again, entities are the keyword that you want to extract out. So um, um, actually, a, probably a better way of um, uh, calling it uh, or modifying it uh, rather than call it sick. Maybe I need to add a synonym sicky to, <laughs> to this, right? Um, anyway, so you get the general idea. These are the, the key where you want to extract out from a sentence. These are all customizable as well. And so are the dialogues and even the uh, uh, constant component. You can uh, modify it. Um, and uh, you could see there's a default implementation. However, you can use your favorite JavaScript Node.js um, development tool to modify and add additional functionality, any customizations that you may have. All right, so that's how you would do that. Now, as you can see, uh, PeopleSoft actually um, have created 
uh, you know, a lot of these uh, digital systems, right? So, uh, sorry, a lot of these skills. So, you know, end user where you can either um, deploy these as is as individual chatbot or better, uh, and this is where digital system comes in, is that you will create a digital system for, and then add all these skills to it. So how do we do that? Um, oh, well, this, this may take a little time, so unfortunately I'll do that. Um, now, what I, the first thing I need to do is to publish uh, this version. Pub publish just means that, um, okay, um, normally I would wait for training to, to complete, but in the interest of time, I'm just going to publish that, basically create a version that cannot be deleted. So that's the version you can add to a you know, that high-level digital system that routes to different skills. Uh, and also, I think I have, um, and yeah, so this is my customized one. And then I also have an employee directory that's available as is. Uh, I think that's already, since I didn't customize it, it's already published. So the process of creating a digital system for people sought. So is this, is I just go ahead and say, create a new digital assistant. Um, and I'll just call this PeopleSoft Assistant. Now, OK. Something. Weird happen. Let me try it again. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So I started with blank. Now I can just go ahead and add skills. Uh, let me see. I want to add PeopleSoft, and uh, I can add the employee directory. And also my extended uh, absence uh, assistant. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I the training hadn't completed, that's why I couldn't add it. But let's just add the default one. Ah. Oh, I think uh, I need to um, add something to it. Um, so basically, I need to give an invocation name. An example utterance. Uh, so let's uh, so say um, phone number. Oops. Uh, that's weird. I don't know. Maybe UI is in your state. Okay. Oh, there we go. Phone number and get <laughs> interesting. Get address. So uh, you, you can keep on it, and then I can add another skill. Uh, People solve absence assistant. Uh, okay, some something weird is happening, but you get the general idea. And then for each of those skills, you can then add um, additional parameters and so forth. And once you add to it, then this single PeopleSoft assistant can um, route requests to all of the skills that PeopleSoft ships, right? And because PeopleSoft is shipping these individual skills, um, chances are, if you want, um, chances are you probably create a digital assistant that would um, um, include a number of the skills that PeopleSoft team ships so that you'll be able to use a single interface, the digital system interface, to route to the different PeopleSoft uh, back in. All right. Moving on. Something more interesting. What um, um, I think most of you may have heard, you know, attended the previous session, for example, with um, uh, you know, uh, Quest virtual conferences, which was Collaborate, um, you, you have for digital assistant. And uh, so I also want to give everyone who has attended these sessions an update on the digital assistant and some recent update. There's quite a few things that are new. Um, 
and uh, I'm not going to rattle off all of those, but um, some of the more, more important ones is a unified intent Q&A module that basically unifies a transactional type of intent with Q&A intent. Um, there's um, a local conversation designer. There's a few service cloud, Oracle service cloud right now related integration, machine learning based entities. And I'm going to talk about um, shortly multilingual language services uh, and, and also speech. We have our voice to text engine. Um, and um, that basically um, now is um, can handle multiple languages and as well as um, a digital assistant insights that basically um, um, has a few enhancement that I'm going to uh, demonstrate shortly. Um, and also in the client enhancement, um, and, and this is um, in the last six months, we have um, created a new version of the web SDK and mobile SDK that has significant new functionalities such as way indicator, autocomplete. We also um, added the application initiate a conversation so that you can push a notification in Slack and Microsoft Teams. We're also working on a number of Microsoft Teams integration in terms of making the provisioning of the Microsoft Teams uh, digital assistant integration easier, supporting adaptive cars and so forth, as well as audit uh, tester and uh, an audit trail. So exactly what is a unified natural language pro uh, program model? Basically, uh, making a long story short, it's a um, um, NLP model that have um, uh, um, that we have, for lack of a better term, just make things smarter by pre-training it with a lot of the enterprise-specific terminology, and that benefits um, uh, a variety of um, um, enterprise use cases. And what we have done is, we, for example, uh, we have uh, Kilton is one of our customer. We found that the accuracy improved from 90 to 98 uh, percent, and also um, we also handle, a, you know, um, there's a few um, scenarios where, let's say, if you have a skill that has a huge number of utterances and some has very few, sometimes it can skew the results of the uh, skill routing. We resolve that as well. Um, we also reduce the um, uh, uh, time to train the digital assistant uh, quite a bit. Uh, we also does um, handling spelling mistakes a lot uh, uh, easier, a, a lot better. So, okay, a lot of these, okay, sorry, there seems to be um, um, some network interruption, uh, but we're adding a lot of these core um, um, enhancement and, and functionality. Okay, I want to make sure it's, it's still okay. All right. All right, so um, um, what we can now do in the, um, in the recent enhancement is we can handle much better in terms of similar versus unrelated um, entities. So for example, can I get some flatbread versus can I get some flowers? Um, completely different, um, the, you know, the request may sound similar, but uh, the actual um, intent is actually completely different we can handle that uh, better. Also, we um, handle better uh, is uh, long utterances as well as closely related intent. So for example, I wanna cancel my order versus why was my order canceled? Different question. We can now handle those type of closely related intent a lot better. All right. We also uh, created and added a number of system intent. System intent basically are out of the box you know, things that, um, um, that the utterances that user may use um, for small talk and things like that um, and, um, and so forth. So you can see that, and one of the, uh, the key outcome of that is uh, we unify the intent and, uh, and Q&A, right? So you can basically now define intent as a, uh, a set of uh, utterances, which is the question, and then provide a direct answer. You can mix that with transactional intent. So it gives you much more flexibility in creating a true digital system that can handle both um, static questions as well as dynamic transactions. You can mix it all together. Before, as you may recall, we have a separate QA module. You can load um, 
a FAQ into it, but that's completely separate from transactional. Now you can mix and match and do and, and create a really unified experience for your end users. Machine-based system entities is also very interesting. So what it is basically is um, we now do a better job in understanding the context in extracting uh, a keyword. Okay, so um, what do we mean by that? So what, what does it really help? So first of all, we do a much better job in handling long multi-part name. For, this, for people solve, it's important, right? Especially for employee directory, um, where in countries where people may have long names, we do a much, much better job in handling that. Now, in, in this example, what you see is um, Google was founded in 1998 by Larry Page and sort of that, while they were PhD in Stanford University of California. There's a lot of nouns here, right? A lot of nouns here and a lot of names. The um, And what we're able to do is use machine learning by loading these, uh, you know, dictionary encyclopedia into our natural language um, um, process. Sorry, I Okay, to be able to um, decipher, Google means organization, Larry Page and Sergey Brin is our people names, and uh, Stanford University is organization, California's location. So we're able to use machine learning to understand the context of these different nouns or, um, or names. Um, and other things that I will, you know, and this is also a funny example, well, can also handle uh, things like, what do you say, uh, what if someone say, find Paris Hilton from the Paris office? Well, I don't think Paris Hilton is based in Paris. Um, but anyway, we can now do a better job in disambulating between names and locations because now we train the, uh, um, the entity recognition with machine learning. So we know Paris is a location, Paris Hilton, it's a dynamic entity, it's a person entity, it's a, a from employee. As well as um, um, understanding the difference between time, uh, you know, in numbers, uh, what is the currency versus number? Lunch for three for 60 bucks. Well, three and 60 are both numbers. Because we're now able to see, oh, bucks, that means, you know, so 60 must mean money and three is person. You know, so, you know, this may sound, um, you know, I don't know if it sounds insignificant, but it's actually quite significant because before we introduce machine learning based entities, and for those of you who actually create a, uh, a chatbot before, it's hard to train the digital system to understand um, the, the context or the concept of three and 60. You essentially have to pass to the back end all of these numbers to um, for the back end to decipher which is which. In this case, now the entity recognition will be able to decipher three mean a number, so quantity, and 60 is a currency. And um, system entities are really helping um, making digital system uh, development quicker and easier. Uh, I'm going to do this um, um, demo shortly, uh, so I'm going, not going to show that. Um, now, with Microsoft Teams and Slack, we also support application initiative conversations. And also conversation test framework. Uh, I'm going to skip through this. All right. So very quickly, let's look at the uh, um, demo of the uh, uh, Insight. I have four minutes left. So very quickly, if I can get my... Um, Arrow back. So this is the new improved digital system insight. So first of all, what, what is an insight? It's basically the uh, analytics that we show for each of the digital system. One of the, the um, so the UI looks different now. Um, it gives you much more information up front, still give you key statistics. One of the new feature is this work cloud. And work cloud basically um, shows you what are the predominant intent that user ask uh, and also, um, um, and green means that um, it worked. No intent means that uh, it didn't resolve correctly. And uh, well, actually it requires further disambiguation. Unresolved means that it didn't resolve to anything. These are the intent that you want to, uh, uh, to focus on. So you can drill into it 
and uh, uh, look at what those are. Whoops. Ah. Eh. Of course, it, after all that yakking, it timed out. That's OK. All right, another thing. Uh, hmm. yeah. Maybe it's a sign that I better move on. <laughs> All right, today it was there, now it's gone. Uh, <laughs> looks like the demo gods is not with me um, today. But uh, in the little time that, um, well, let me see, maybe I. Okay. Well, I'm working against a demo environment, so I think somebody decided to uh, uh, make changes to it. Um, but luckily, I have uh, a backup of, um, of this. All right. So I'm not going to play through all of that in the interest of time. So basically, you can see um, uh, all the. Um, the latest changes and also we added vo voice analytics and so you can also 